Good morning. Welcome to the Daily Race. <laughs> it is a beautiful Sunday morning. Well, it is a, it is a cold Sunday morning. I uh, hope our, our plant survived in the backyard. I know it's going to be, I uh, had a freeze warning here, which I, I know for a lot of people outside of Arizona, like every morning is a freeze warning this time of year, but it's uh, it's it's as cold as, as it gets. And uh, that doesn't keep us from, from getting up together. It doesn't keep us from going to church today. It's Sunday, so we're getting ready to cross our campuses uh, getting ready to come together and worship. Now we are in this study on the names of Jesus, the names of Christ, and, and what these names mean. And as each name is given, as each name is, is used as a descriptor about one of, of Christ's qualities, uh, one of his attributes. And, and today we're going to be looking in Isaiah because we're, we're getting close to Christmas, so we're looking at some of these prophecies about the coming Messiah. And this is this is a famous one. This is one that when you hear it, you, you, you might recognize it. Um, it's found in Isaiah chapter 9, uh, verse, starting in verse 6. It says this, For a child is born to us, a son is given to us. The government, will rest, <laughs> the government will rest on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His government and his peace will never end. He will rule with fairness and justice from the throne of his ancestor David for all eternity. The passionate commitment of the Lord of Heaven's armies will make this happen. All right, so we've got we've got like four titles here. So um, <clears throat> not just one: Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. All right, so this is talking about the Messiah. No doubt here, he says he's talking about he will rule with fairness and justice from the throne of his ancestor David for all eternity. So this is a messianic prophecy. And at the center of these titles, it says, Mighty God, uh, the deity of the Messiah, that this coming Savior will be God, Mighty God. And even the next uh, title there, Everlasting Father, and this, uh, this rule going forever, everlasting. That's a, a, a quality only God has. Only God is everlasting. So in this prophecy, hundreds of, of years before, it's tying together uh, that this isn't just going to be some earthly king, not just some special or some prophet, but, but God himself is coming down. Now that term everlasting father, uh, the word father historically in the Old Testament is not attached to the idea of king. Uh, a lot of uh, imagery is used around kings, but, but father is not one of them. This is a unique title for the Messiah. Uh, it shows God's quality, uh, his, his character in coming down to save us. That, that fatherly care. Uh, that When Jesus comes, he always refers, hey, refer to, pray to your, your father in heaven. It's this close relationship. It's this caring relationship. It's this protecting, providing relationship that God has for us, that God is our father. And that since the Messiah is God in the flesh, Jesus is God in the flesh, he will exhibit this, this caring quality as well. Let's look at that wonderful counselor, wonderful counselor. So one of the problems that came up with kings uh, in the past, with uh, King David, with King Solomon, King Solomon especially, were their counselors, were the people around them, giving them advice. Uh, a lot of, some good advice is given, but a lot of bad advice is given. And this Messiah isn't going to need any other counselor. He's going to be his own counselor because he's going to have all wisdom. Uh, that he's going to know the right thing to do. Now, we know that because he's God, but it's reassuring the people that his decisions will be right. His rule will be right. The counsel that he gives will be right and true. And he doesn't have to take <clears throat> the input of those around, not because he's prideful, but because all wisdom sets in him. Uh, no one can give more truth than perfect truth. So wonderful counselor, uh, a wise ruler, mighty God, God in the flesh, everlasting father, a caring, loving protector, provider, and finally, prince of peace, prince of peace, that his rule will put an end to, to conflict, put an end to, to battles. Now, of course, when people were reading this and they're li living in a situation where they're ruled by the Persians or they're getting ready to, ready to be conquered by the Assyrians or the um, or any other group that, that's coming through at, at that time. They believe that Prince of Peace is all about this 
warrior that's going to come and put an end to battles and, you know, conquer their enemies. Uh, but we know that the coming of Jesus solved a larger conflict. That was he defeated the battle, not of the Roman army, but of sin itself. He conquered death and sin with his victory on the cross. On the cross. When he rose from the dead, he conquered the curse of death and sin. Uh, the greatest conflict and peace, ultimate peace, everlasting peace is available through him and what he did. So, so we got four, four titles here today. Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Four more facets to the person of Jesus. Four more facets to the coming Messiah as we see in this prophecy here today. As we are, are looking expectantly to the coming of the Savior. We're getting ready to celebrate Christmas. The people this prophecy were that was written to, they're looking forward to the coming, the first coming of Jesus. All right, let's go ahead and pause there, and we're going to get ready to, to pray. Uh, pray for our, our different services and our different ministry teams and across all of our teams. We have some incredible uh, leaders and volunteers that serve with our, our local missions. So these are uh, different projects and activities that we do outside the doors of the church. And when we do those things, the, the Turkey Bowl, we do those things, or the, the Wishbone Festival, Turkey Bowl is just the football game that kids play on Thanksgiving morning. That, that isn't an organized Palm Valley event. <laughs> the Wishbone Festival, the, the, the Buckeye Campus did Toys and More yesterday. Uh, the whole church body rallies. Right? We had so many volunteers that showed up in both those, but there were some key leaders behind the scenes working for months in advance, planning, leading, organizing, and they're getting ready for, for other events next year. I want to take for a moment here just to pray for our local, minist local missions team's leaders as we kick off the day. Lord, we love you. And we thank you for uh, that you are the Prince of Peace. God, as we uh, get ready to, to celebrate Christmas, you're coming. God, we stand in a place in history where the battle's been won. You already defeated death and sin that peace is available through you. So God, as we walk through this season, uh, may we cling to you, the Prince of Peace. Uh, may we share that message with those who are struggling, who are in conflict, who are in pain, that peace can be found in you. And God, this morning, I just lift up all of our, our local missions leaders, uh, those who are organizing events and, and serving the community, God. We know their heartbeat is to, to bring peace to the community. God, through actions, through service, and through words, meeting needs, helping people in conflict, in conflict with their finances, in conflict with life itself, and pointing them to you, the overall Prince of Peace. God, we pray that you would continue to work through them. God, we pray for a harvest this Christmas season as, as thousands upon thousands of invitations have gone out through all of these different events, through the Glow and Monroe and Turkey and the uh, Wishbone Festival, and the Toys and More Project, God. We, we pray that these people would walk through the doors of church this Christmas season and hear about you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. All right, well, hey, I hope you have a great, great rest of the day. I know I'm excited over at the Goodyear campus. Uh, we've got baptisms today, the last ones of the year. Uh, Buckeye wrapped up uh, their baptisms for the year last month. Uh, God has been moving in such an incredible way. Uh, it's such a privilege to be able to every single month have more and more baptisms, people professing their faith in Jesus Christ, going public with that decision that they made. So exciting. It's, it can't be a bad day uh, when, you're, when we're getting together to worship, getting together to uh, have some fellowship together at church, but also lift up the name of Jesus. So look forward to seeing you uh, later today if you're at the Goodyear campus. But if not, I know I'll see you 24 hours from now right back here on The Daily Race. Love you guys.